They love him and he loves them. And Nigel Mansell comes out of Luffield 1 into Luffield 2, which is the last corner of a 1. They're breaking ranks. The Union Jacks are waving. And Nigel Mansell wins the 1992 British Grand Prix in terrific style. Hands off the wheel. He, he sees the opportunity to become the world champion getting greater and greater as he completes that winning lap and he's now on his wind down lap. Now the, now the tradition, and it's not one I approve of to be quite honest with you, as Patrese comes through in second place, is for the crowd to go onto the course as they do in Le Mans. And that's very dangerous, of course, because there are drivers a lap or so behind the leaders who are still going at racing speed. But Riccardo Patrese is going to finish in second place to make it the sixth, first and second for the Williams team in 1992. Mansell then. There he is. And there is the pit. And coming through is Michael Schumacher, who has passed Gerhard Berger. Michael Schumacher is going to finish behind his teammate. There's Berger, he's blown the Honda V12 engine. Mansell wins, Patrese second. The Benettons of Brundle and Schumacher move ahead of McLaren in the Constructors' Championship as Schumacher dramatically takes Berger on the last corner as the Honda engine in the McLaren blows. And Gerhard Berger finishes in fifth position. And Nigel Mansell, now let's see as he is followed very, very appropriately by Damon Hill, who has just finished his first Grand Prix. Englishman leads on the track there. An Englishman follows in his wheel tracks. And you can see how happy Nigel Mansell is. Now, is Mansell going to stop? and offer for the second year in succession a lift to Ayrton Senna. The answer is no, because Ayrton Senna has already gone back. I imagine he wouldn't be too keen on doing it a second year in succession, and he would have thought of that just as I did. Well, the crowd must keep off the course. Doesn't mean to say they'll do it. They are already all over the course in the start and finish position. But Mansell now is savouring this, and justifiably so. I would love to be on the car to pits radio because Mansell is uh, quite a chatty chap during the race, and there's a constant flow of conversation between him and the pits. And they're seeing now their hero come through. If he gets back to the pits through this lot, I think he will be doing extremely well. What a wonderful sight. This is Nigel's seventh win of 1992. It raises his World Championship points score to 76. His teammate, Riccardo Patrese, by finishing second, gets another six points to give him 40. So Nigel now leads the championship by 36 points after race nine in this 16-race World Championship Series with the races in Germany in two weeks' time. Hungary, Belgium, Italy, Portugal, Japan, and the marvellous wind-up at the end of the season that everybody loves to go to, the Australian Grand Prix at Adelaide. Will he be world champion when the series reaches Australia? Well, there is still a long way to go. He's got a massive lead, but it is not an unbeatable one, although it's certainly looking more and more like it race by race. Since Thursday morning, the crowds have been pouring into Silverstone. This is what they came to see. This is what they have seen. Now, it's going to be very difficult. Get out of it, says the marshal. Clear the car. I just want to give him this Union Jack, mate. Now, this is... This is this, this is club corner, and when uh, when I tell you that Nigel has still got the run up to Abbey, the Bridge, Priory, Brooklands, the two Luffield corners, Woodcote, and the start finish, I, I mean he's just going to have to to uh, rev it and try to get through. But I can't see the crowd parting. They're round their idol. They're within touching distance of him. They ought to give a big hand to Damon Hill that you can see in the centre of your picture in the multicoloured Brabham with its new livery. But uh, now, 
I say again that the British Grand Prix of 1992, round nine of the World Championship Series, has been won by Nigel Mansell, 39 seconds ahead of his teammate Riccardo Patrese, with in third position in the Benetton Ford, Martin Brundle, his second, third place in succession, third in France, third in Britain. Martin Brundle is not on his way back, he's back! And Michael Schumacher in fourth position in the second Benetton Ford. And look at Nigel Mansell now. He'll be, he'll be boiling hot inside his racing overalls and inside his fireproof underwear. But he won't mind. Gerhard Berger finishes fifth in fifth position. And in sixth position, it's Mika Hakkinen. Michele Alboreto seventh, a lap behind. The first six all finished after full distance. And if I was... If I was Mansell, I would be getting worried. Uh, I've been up and down those steps for the last two days, and I can tell you that they take a bit of climbing. <laughs> Prince Michael of Kent congratulates Nigel Mansell, and so do the crowd. seeing it again. Nigel Mansell's seventh win out of nine races. a break in my voice I'll tell you with for the second week in succession the same three men on the podium Prince Michael that's it that's the winner's trophy and those three men winner Nigel Mansell second place Riccardo Patrese third position Martin Brundle as Geoffrey Rose the chairman of the Royal Automobile Club gives and that is uh, Mr. Kenneth Clark, who's given Ricardo Patrese his award. And Martin Brundle, so it's two Englishmen on the podium for the second week in succession. Mansell wins, Patrese second, Brundle third, Schumacher fourth, Berger fifth, Hakkinen sixth. And just listen to this. Oh! It's champagne time! Take that, Martin Brundle, and you can take that back! <laughs> well, this may seem rather childish, but it is an enormous release of tension. If ever I have seen a look of pure, unadulterated joy, that is it. So Riccardo Patrese and Martin Brundle go into the press office to give the interviews to the press. And you'll be reading all about it tomorrow. Well, you've seen it here. He stays alone, savouring the moment. Who can